Hello. So first things first, let us remember throughout this lecture that schemes and diagrams do not represent a reality. They are merely a map of concepts, of descriptives, of ideatics. However, I would like to conjure some uh, diagrams and schemes here to elucidate certain things better. Now, first things first, I would like to talk about the progress through the crowns of the spheres of the planet and uh, how all ritualized ceremonial magic and the completeness of ver unus, of men, of women, may be described in such a manner. So first I will use the Galen's distinction between the rational soul or reason, spiritual soul or feeling and appetitive soul or instincts, emotions and so on and so on. <clears throat> Now, if we employ all of those three, we can put them towards threefold activities that are necessary in the proposed model of ascension and excellence. So we employ all those three in the intellectual scholarly disciplines, all social sciences, strict sciences, occult sciences, and so on and so on, as long as they are ordered, beautiful, and uh, portraying your knowledge of the world in a real fashion. That is, you incorporated the knowledge, you may educate yourself, you are a critical thinker, and you are ready to receive notions of much deeper knowledge and understanding that the muses and intelligences convey, that is, unearthly knowledge. Now, performative worldly means that you act in the world with your speech, with your action, with your thought, with everything that you have learned throughout the experience, throughout the developmental psychology, throughout the evolution of your nature, your genii, and so on and so on. And the occulted magical is all things related to unapparent. So the magical activities, the gymnosophy, uh, the ceremonies, the rites, the yoga, and so on and so on and so on. So every single domain in the solar system, of the spheres of the solar system, has certain, let's say, uh, attributes pertaining to them. So you may relate to Earth in a rational, spiritual, appetitive way, and intellectual, scholarly, performative, worldly, and occulted, magical. And most of us people on Earth are developing in the domain of Terra, of Earth. Whether it is performative worldly, we have a job, we have a family, and so on and so on, we live on and die. Whether it is occulted magical, whether we are related to the elements of earth, elementals of earth, intelligences of earth, spirits of earth, and so on and so on. And intellectual scholarly, so we pursue, for example, academic disciplines, we learn, we teach, and so on and so on. Now, <clears throat> this is foremost, that we stay on Earth. The transmigratory cycle is closed, the soul remains here, the soul is reborn into the earthly realm, and so on, so on. So lunar, Selene, means the Isle of the Blessed, and it is the first stage of conquering the Hadesian dogs, or the Artemisian mysteries, in occulted magical sense, that the soul ascends to the Isle of the Blessed beyond the gravity of Earth, and beyond the influence of earth and then may redescend upon earth in soul and spirit. Now solar, that is important, that doesn't mean we can reascend to the sun, it means that during all operations of occulted, magical, performative and intellectual, we must exhibit the solar qualities in order to have a safe path unheld by the dark realms of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Earth and the Moon. So this is the supportive providence of the multiplicities and the oneness of, let's say, Apollonian origin related strictly to the intellectual manner of the rational soul, a fierce uh, idea of the Apollonian stance. So mercurial, all things related to poetry, communication, rhetorics, and so on and so on, this is the intellectual acquisition of such skills. This is the performance in the worldly manner in order to convey 
many uh, topics in masterly way and communicate them in a rhetorical fashion. Uh, occulted magical Mercury, especially the aleatory spirits, contain the knowledge of many hidden things that may help you understand the universe because this is a proxy planet to the sun therefore it is directly afflicted affected by its divine rays of the corridor of fire of the hyper celestial realities of the third teletarchic divine fire conjoining all the might of the stars of course i'm talking strictly about the solar system each other world system is different and the stars as we know differ from each other so no i don't have a fixation on just one star okay martian oh venusian so all things exquisite related to uh, sublime love but also the bed the dark lust of let's say appetitive soul of instincts more lilith like and uh, all forms of uh, qualities that are related historically and astrologically to this planet pertaining to the sphere of intelligence as the invisible spiritual sphere of this planet mars that is both war discipline and so on so on jupiter kingly rule all qualities related to arts and conjoining with venus uh, great kingly skills and nobility most of all saturn a uh, sagely and very difficult planet namely it is related both to the let's say fallen uh, masters and elevated emperors uh, for example we may pick marcus aurelius as the mitraic seventh rank of saturnian gold in opposition to Saturnian lead, that is the health of Saturn. The Saturnian Uranian complex is taken from the idea of Fraternitas Saturni, and the qualities won't be described here, however, they are very important. I picked a Chaldean model here, apart from Uranus, of course. And uh, what is more, after we manage to excel in every sphere, in these disciplines even if for a short while that is not a mm, task that lasts nobody is perfect amongst the generations of earth and we may be perfect at times we may be high pitched to excellence at times but there is not a single person that may sustain excellence throughout the life time and change now in theory after conquering or winning the crowns of the natures of those planets and being honored by them, we are moving to the 12 Herculean zodiacal tasks. Did you know that the uh, Herculean tasks were actually related to the works of the zodiac of the stars, whereupon we immortalize our name and our star as such? That's that was a uh, belief held by uh, the Greeks, by the Egyptians, by the Zarathustrans, and so on, so on. So apart from the, let's say, Gnostic conquering of the Archons, we don't conquer them, we actually excel to the point in which we are admitted to the council of those planets. And then we reach for the stars at the very last. So, uh, that was a very quick shortcut. Now let me move to what we understand by intellectual meta-rhetorics. For example, we have some important concepts like knowledge, experience, perception, thought, memory, imagination, aesthetics. Now, if we choose the first meta-level, the deep level, knowledge is a data-infused structural library and then meta level information contained in all forms of energy throughout the universe concept experience deep level subjective triggers enabling absorption of libraries meta level sum of codified laws of a given system perception concept deep level the way the libraries are lensed through the mind meta level shifts of patterns between two referential modes thought deep level Reassembling the constellation of patterns and structures. Meta level, inceptive difference of a state preceding another state. Concept, memory, deep level, storehouse of reference between one relative pattern and another. 
meta level archive of information in all potential states. Concept imagination, deep level capacity to manipulate libraries beyond their solid state recollection, meta level freedom of change of data and its possible networks from one extreme point of a rule to another. Aesthetics, deep level, ability to order meaningful sets of data into subjectively pleasing patterns or notions into beauty and arete. Meta level, a shift of form between supersymmetry and chaos. Now, this is re-abstracting and stripping the concepts back to the original ideas. So we reverse engineer the concept into certain depth of understanding and try to organize it into a different descriptive. Mm, and this will be very important in understanding this in particular. So let us say that the platonic cave is the prison, the catacombs into which we move deeper and deeper with every virtualization of the world. So. The platonic cave is represented by shadows, naive realism, reification, illusions and blinding. The Pythagorean folk, the right turn on Pythagorean folk is creating a decision that we want to perceive the world as something more than matter, physis. The, this is the interface and here we are reacquiring ontological state as being, body, observing environment, mind, emotions and senses. I will describe the mentalese or mental stream later. Now the method is gigantomachia, the inner fight against tartarism or the, the attempt to sculpt in oneself as in those activities uh, mentioned previously. And this is done through learning, training, training self-control, refinement, self-cultivation and carving, sculpting in oneself. Now the interpreter is Theonergon. Gigantomachy may be called homoiosis Theo in Neoplatonics or becoming godlike. Theonergon is being in touch with divinities and receiving from them. So here we are receiving the translation of consciousness, will, memory, receptiveness and awareness. And here we reach for the a priori platonic worlds, the reclamation of our spirit, that is deification into godhood, into a diamond, feeling, intellect, pneuma, and pitching to it continuously. And then, as we shed our skin, our flesh, there is the ascent aspect into the transcendent world, that are the masks of gods, unity, togetherness, wholeness, the deep laws of the understanding. Now, how should we understand forces? Well, for example, at the forces level that only the deities understand, we may try to uh, emasculate them as energy, equilibria, deep reality and grammar. For example, I recounted some 24 forces of this type, but I won't mention all of them here. The ideational level of energy equilibria is harmony. The deep reality grammar ideational level is necessity. Now, if you pick two personify those uh, forces and ideas as gods, as goddesses, we may unmask those forces as, for example, Maat, the Egyptian goddess of harmony and truth, or Ta in Hindi, or Ananke, Greek goddess of necessity. Do these goddesses exist? Well, this is such a high level of abstractions that they both may and they may not. Now, uh, reflection, reflecting intellectual level or the translation of those notions onto the mortalese, its sense of balance and seeking truth and sense of having a destiny. Now, the experiential levels of living ideas is, for example, ignoring lower fate, strengthening against austerities and forbearing misfortunes, sense of destiny, a stoic idea or motivation to seek incorporating balance researching what may be true and living it what may be false and rejecting it delusion realization a very dharmic buddhist magical uh, pursuit now this this what are the key concepts in uh, those activities well i divided it into the first quadrature of reasoning intellecting feeling and cogitating and then what creates a consciousness? Consciousness is more like a condensed anima mundi into the pneumatic ein of that is usually between the eyebrows, like the Hindus have this bindi or potu point 
uh, painted uh, on the between the eyebrows that means that the god is within and when you say namaste it means that you honor the god in the other one as the other one honors the god within you and that is divided into will observation focus idea perception beliefs because there are beliefs that hinder your understanding memory self-reflection knowledge and imagination that is concordant with notions the more concordant it is the more we may incorporate the realized things and the more we may strengthen our purpose to act in the great alchemy of the world now now this is uh, a bit complex here this is describing recurrent atavism as an Austin Osman's pair so we start from the uh, biological archetypes ontogeny phylogeny a germ of ego psychic archetypes and uh, the everything is descending from the cosmic womb of magna mater in the mythological sense the great cave of the space uh, okay so bioelectromagnetic layer biopsychology bioelectromagnetics cognitivistics psychotronics consciousness theories observer effect singularity this is rather far-fetched but all this is le leading to a cognitive phenotype or the type of mind you have uh, the type of mind you have has a system capacity style of thinking processing and a structure that leads to thoughts and uh, thoughts are based on let's say episteme so your knowledge existing knowledge codified knowledge this is filtered through reality tunnels the content the scripts that you live by that leads to identities your outer image uh, the self-image or the homunculus meta control deep image and this content is either conditioned, self-conditioned, or acquired. So, and then, then, okay. The thoughts are related to Vasana that I will explain in a while. And Jiva, your individual soul, Tulpa, is the layer of, like, uh, uh, your forefront in the astral magical realm. And the Karman, or all the inclinations uh, in the codependent co-rising world that you are receiving and broadcasting so uh, yes vasanas what are vasanas okay let us uh, try to understand that the world the anima mundi is filled with force power pure force power which is the shakti energy and then it is contaminated or influenced by various forces and powers that are the energy seeds that each being mortal star throws out every single minuscule time. So those energy seeds interact with each other and they go through the carrier of energy that is matter, psychism, panpsychism and all that. The On the mortal level, the individual personal vasanas this is like a codification in neural systems and external vasanas or interferences that is also a neural understanding of it are triggering and mixing threshold of successfully processing signals so where these active forces are reaching in the codependent co-arising world a certain threshold they create seeds for example seed one seed two this is like a uh, genetics of the powers and forces intermixing with each other in great evolution and adaptation and change and in mortals it means for example a thought form formation here we have three uh, so-called cybits as i like to call them condensed experiences tunnel realities energies uh, everything that you may contain occulted and unocculted ways is in a cybib Cybit. so it leads to the phenomenal manifestation for example we initiate a thought or an act or a force or a power or a god or a goddess is acting and uh, this habitual layer is leading to two things gnosis aretos or the silent speech barbara onomata in magic and semiotic language 
Mm, semiotic language is the one that we use in communication in everyday life. So uh, we communicate the mental stream, the habits, feelings, emotions, senses, thoughts and inclinations according to our mind, memories, experience, impressions, perception, fantastic on our imagination. Now, this is related to the intellect, uh, the way we discern the semiotic language should be in theory governed by rhetoric and logic that leads to reason, proportion, harmony, beauty, that is aletheia, that is mnemosyne, the memory of the truth, which is gnosis aretos, the silent mentalist language of notions, ideas and divine streams. This is leading to realization as we acquire the notions and reflect them through the masks of deities, through the force, and it leads, the incorporation of this leads to the alchemy of Ak, which was symbolized in Egypt as the walking bird. This is the operation of the intellect, the cosmic pan-psychic intellect, and it is reflected in a type. Okay, I hope you didn't get lost because I'm starting to get lost. Now, how to weave it into the theory of magic? This is an isolated magical feedback mechanism system. So uh, it's like if you strip magic of all intelligences, nature, everything that surrounds you and try to explain it in a, a simply mechanistic way, you have the socialized scripts that we use every day, the conditioned scripts that are automatisms. And uh, when you discover and or are influenced by your true will and your daimon, uh, it becomes real as the movement from intention to projection. And this is a conscious act through automatisms or ignoring automatism and self-governing as in autocraton. So from this, we have thought forms and energy manipulation of conscious. We may imprint energy upon other energy fields. We may use thought forms and images, sounds, ideas with this imprinted energy. We may use larynx as in sound production. That is a type of synergy with images, sounds and imprinted energy. This may be vibrated and visualized. And uh, if we code it, in certain, let's say, sequences, frequencies, and so on. And this encoding is done by languages and signs, grammar of semiotics, universal primes, translating algorithms. We may imprint it upon the wave spectrum or the wave function of energy, and then it leads to magic. So uh, it is only successful if your magic is tied with the laws of the deep world. Otherwise, it is a mere act upon the ethers of the void. So in a perfectly isolated system, that's how it works. And that leads to communicating your ideas, images, and so on in a feedback loop into the world, back into the world, the socialized world. And most of uh, human uh, mortals are living in the socialized, conditioned, automatist world. You need a lot of work and labor and act in order to uh, use it properly. This is the operand of magic, so on. And uh, how to explain beliefs and that some people simply cannot break through this. For example, in fundamental religions or in certain belief systems, uh, they are creating prison self-referencing loops that uh, even in intersubjectivity their beliefs are self-referencing and they break down the communication to nothingness. Now critical minds usually have also subjective patterns of mind but when they turn intersubjective uh, they may understand it on the layer of the chaosphere of biotechno-informational streams of consciousness or data and so on, and abolish ignorance, lead to knowledge, and reach to those notions, those great notions across the universe, the red-deified universe, that is a meta-reality. Of course, there is an apophatic unknowable, the angst, angst, the unknown unknowns, and we will never know the objective truth for sure, but we may near the realized uh, notions with a critical mind, intersubjectively, 
through the medium of gnosis, of knowledge, of understanding, in order to defeat ignorance. Now, as you see, the belief systems of certain religions are incapable of that. They are pushing you back into a belief system prison. Okay, I hope that uh, explains a lot. Probably it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, that means I failed as a lecturer. So this is another one on how to reach understanding with people. For example, if you use uh, social networking sites and uh, you want to influence someone. Let's say that... Uh, hmm. Okay, you have communication. So uh, you have a cognitive setting and output. You want to communicate something, inform someone about something, influence them. So you use communication and rhetorics. If you don't, there is an information void. That means that nothing is communicated because it was not communicated. If it is, it leads to a message. Now we have a media or a carrier. Do we have the attention of someone? No. So it leads to information void. If we have a attention and we have an audience to our information, it may lead to receptability or not. If it doesn't, the cognitive setting of our audience is in the nay. Uh, it is landing in the information void. If we manage to influence or make someone to at least digest the information that we're providing, it is prone to be interpretation. If we want to, if, if we successfully influence someone in a way that we intended to, that is a concordant interpretation with our desire to influence in a certain manner, influence as intended, and that is the success. If it is discordant, it is either ineffective communication, misunderstanding, information mutates, and the cognitive setting is uh, changed in the wrong manner or not changed at all. So, uh, I hope that we reached a concordant set of uh, mutual understanding here, moving through all those weird structures of concepts and so on. At least I didn't end up in the information void, but uh, have fun. Thank you.